So I'm, I'm Aaron Edsinger. We're at IROS 2011, and uh, this is the Mecca Robotics booth. We're at San Francisco Company, and we're just down the road from the hotel here. Uh, we've been doing this for about four years. We build humanoid robots, and the focus of our work is to make them uh, to be able to work around people. So these robots have a sense of force in the arm. So they can sense at every joint that I'm applying force to it, and it can react to that. Uh, so this robot is just going through a can procedure moving around, but what we're trying to show here is that it has compliance, it's soft, so the arm is feels more like a human arm when you interact with it than a traditional robot arm, which would be very stiff. Um, and so it's got two cameras in the eyes. Uh, these eyes actually are, can be very high performance, so they can get up to human levels of velocities in terms of moving the eyes around. Um, the, the ears are just for expressive, you know, emotive capa capabilities. Uh, can make it look happier or sadder. Uh, and then the torso itself also has uh, a range of motion to give it the ability to reach down low and reach up high. Uh, so this, this robot belongs, belongs to uh, Pro Professor Luis Santiz at UT Austin. And he's looking at doing whole body torque control. How do you control the entire body in, uh, in terms of torque? at a kilohertz, how do you update that to give a coordinated motion that looks very human-like? What kind of mechanical, um, or how do, you, how do you make it so smooth and so human-like? Uh, so uh, smooth and? Well, it is very smooth, and like the, the, the eyes especially. Like yeah. Uh, so that's just part of the design process. So actually, as a company, we're very interested in the appearance of, of the robot both aesthetic and the motion, that quality of the motion that it creates. Um, part of it is the actuator technology itself is, is fairly unique. Um, and that's really what distinguishes this robot from other ones out there, is the actuators. And that also contributes to the quality of the motion that you see. And how did you design the head? It's uh, certainly different looking, but... Yeah, so the, the, the prof professor had asked for a anime looking you know, sort of youngish female type character. And um, we worked back and forth with him, found images on the internet of different anime characters, gave that to an industrial designer, and then iterated over Skype for many sessions back and forth until we, we came to this. And uh, then we just 3D printed it, had it painted. And who came up with the ears? Uh, that was actually my, my idea, so. We had a puppy, so it had little dog ears and was inspired by that. Okay.